you're an Apple shareholder. Are you excited? I, I, I laugh because when I first saw the numbers come out, this is the only time I've seen investors cheer a drop in iPhone sales. Well, certainly we're happy with the results. Uh, perhaps, the, perhaps the street got a little too bearish on the expectations, so it was a relatively easy beat for Apple in almost every business segment uh, and on revenue and in earnings. Uh, certainly the, the street is trying to make um, you know, some sort of sense out of this change from hardware towards software and services, and it seems like Apple is safely executing that, that change. And we've been waiting for that change for years, and the street is just extraordinarily bearish on Apple. You look at the valuation, it continually trades at a, a lower than market multiple for a company that participates in every area of the digital economy except for maybe a social platform. So we're still pretty bullish on the stock. So he's bullish, he's a shareholder. Dan Ives, mm. you're an analyst that covers this stock. You've also been bullish in the past about Apple as well. Is it fair to say that investors and traders have bought into this idea that Apple is able to properly execute and reinvent itself more towards a services company? Yeah, I think we're kind of in the middle innings of the stock and re-rated on the services side. And I think you saw that again with the services beat and obviously the streaming service coming. We believe 100 million consumers in the next three years they can get. But fundamentally here, I mean, the bears and the skeptics thinking there was going to be a guide lower for June. You saw a much stronger than expected guide. iPhone started to maybe inflect in terms of China. And I think the worst is in the rearview mirror, especially after the December debacle. I think the comeback kid uh, is really, sh in our opinion, I think you'll see new highs in the stock over the coming months. But, but Dan, I mean, it, we, we seem to have come a long way. Remember, it was January 4th, I believe it was, when they came out and guided lower for their results. And the stock took a major hit, but it's been off to the races since. We're not at record highs. We will not open at record highs. But is this a stock right now that is starting to maybe get a little bit more favor with investors? Yeah, it's starting to get its mojo back. And I think when you go back to early January, and our thesis continue to be, you look at the install base, because it's 900 million iPhones that, that are right now active. And you have 350 million of those coming out for an upgrade over the next 12 to 18 months. That continues to be the key. And you look at China, you know, obviously there's been some dark days there, but you're starting to see a rebound there. And I think that was the key to last night in terms of me talking to investors. You're starting to see that inflect into the June quarter and especially the drum roll into the September product cycle. Tim, Tim, you're, you're a holder of this stock. It's one of your top holdings. Is this a report here that you maybe lighten up a bit of your position on? Or are you still holding? Are you adding to this at this stage? Well, we have no plans to lighten up on the position. As, as Dan mentioned, it's not trading at an all-time high. It's not trading at a particularly rich valuation. Uh, so we have no real reason to want to pare back the position. But I think it's important to note, Apple is selling services to its own install base, uh, which, is a, which is pretty favorable grounds for them. So as we talk about the iPhone number being down, we're really talking about the revenue being down, uh, not the, necessarily the handsets, which is data we're not going to get anymore. But if you think about it, they have a lot of room to grow their services within their own ecosphere. So we're really not all that fearful about the company. Um, Tim, if I could, I mean, Apple certainly going to be the big stock story of the day. I, I was wondering if we might kind of tilt this conversation a little bit more towards another tech titan. And that's what's happening with Facebook. They've gone through a bit of a redesign. The narrative has also changed there from the bearish levels that we've seen. H how do you feel about Facebook at this stage, given the, the run-up that we've seen since the December lows? Well, I think you're seeing some of the, the same kind of concerns. You know, certainly Facebook's concerns were data privacy and whether or not the platform was going to continue to be vibrant. Uh, people think of Facebook as only being Facebook, but it's really Facebook, uh, Instagram, it's, uh, you know, and Messenger, which they announced some changes to yesterday, uh, and WhatsApp. And what you're seeing there is continued advertising growth. And the holy grail for all of these companies, particularly in the social space, whether it be Facebook or 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 Alphabet particularly, that advertising growth is what they want, that's where their profits are, and that continues to grow. So as long as that grows 27%, uh, Facebook's going to be just fine, and perhaps the street was too bearish, just like they were with Apple. All right, so Dan, w w last word to you here. We do know that the Facebook saga is not over. They've got a number of headwinds facing them. What exactly does that mean for the prospect for these shares, and should investors be as bullish on Facebook, given the outlook that they have? Yeah, look, I think they've navigated a lot of that storm. And, and, and as Tim talked about, it's all about advertising dollars. 
engagements come back to the platform. Look, they're going to have to balance to make sure they're not back in the beltway or Brussels. But fundamentally, I think the street likes what they're seeing here. And if you look at Facebook, that continues to be named as that goes higher. You know, I think so far you look at Facebook, Apple for fang names outside of Google. It's been an A-plus earnings season.